when you're a new agent it just kind of depends on where you are in your career and what you're willing to do when i was a new agent i drove two hours to get a listing agreement signed i drove two hours two or three hours to show some houses i was willing to do i didn't care i'd do whatever i had to do Closings happen every day for the rest of your life as long as you live. Buy the truckloads too. Buy the truckloads too, not just uh, a few closings or just enough for a few agents. No, there's plenty for everyone. Even during this low inventory time when there's probably maybe, I think I just saw a stat where this is the second month of uh, lower transactions due to the market being so tight. Still during this time, look at MLS. There's There are, there are plenty of closings happening. This is probably the roughest time I've I've ever seen it for new agents trying to squeeze into the market i have to be honest with that um you know the, the the few listings that are happening are going with the more experienced agents for the most part unless you're really slick and so that leaves just buyers for new agents who are competing against 15 other buyers all right so that's tough but i'll tell you this if you can make it right now during this market you can make it through any market and there's going to come a day and it's not too far off where the market's going to get completely flooded with listings for people who want to sell I mean, who, who wouldn't want to sell right now with where prices are, right? I mean, prices are ridiculous. And uh, and who, who wouldn't want to sell and, and make the money off their investment? Or, you know, I mean, there's investment properties, you know, that that's an investment. But a lot of people see their personal homes as investments. Who wouldn't want to cash in on the market right now? So why aren't there tons of listings and people trying to cash in on the market? Well, it's because they don't want to leave money on the table. And they, there's nothing to buy, right? If they, if they were to sell, what would they replace? it with so there's two reasons there but there's a lot of people guys who want to upgrade they just can't they just can't and you guys are probably running into this clients who want to upgrade they just can't and so that that demand to, to upgrade is building up and people that want to sell and cash in on this great market is building up and when we start to see the first few signs of leveling off or you know a little pressure on the market in some way maybe interest rates slide up a bit or who knows what's going to cause it but when we do finally hit that place because this can't last forever i'm telling you it's going to be like opening up the floodgates for listings that day is coming is it coming in six months 12 months 18 months 24 months you know when's it happening i don't know but it will happen the market conditions and supply and demand and interest rates and you know what buyers and sellers want to do and the different person like all the things you can't control has nothing to do with your business and your success it has something to do with your business in terms of how you operate of course you got to flow with the market okay and you got to make adjustments but at the end of the day there's always plenty of business for you and that's one thing i learned when my buddy scott told me i'm still just doing phone calls postcards and emails and that really blew my mind so that's what i started i started doing phone calls postcards and emails because back then there was no facebook i think facebook had just started but you know nobody really knew what it was everybody thought it was another myspace that was gonna go away. So nobody really paid attention there in the beginning for a little while until it really took off. But uh, that's how we operated back in the day, postcards, emails, and phone calls. So I started I started building that back up, right? And I started talking to people and you know what? People were very interested in buying beachfront. I'm, I'm in Alabama, right? I'm right on the Florida line. I got my, real, my Florida real estate license. So I could come down there to any of you guys' market and just start complete dominating, no. But I sell about 10% of my properties in Florida. Florida. All right. I'm in uh, Perdido Key is where uh, where I sell. If I sell every once in a while, I'll sell something in Pensacola, but that's pretty rare. So uh, I am I am a fellow Florida licensee here, um, but most of my deals are in Alabama, which is right across the Florida line. I'm right on the beach. So at the time, things were about 50 percent. The market went down about 50 percent and it was just as beautiful. The rent the income, the rental income was just the same. So you, you have the same amount of rental income coming in. 50% decrease in price and the beaches are still incredibly gorgeous. So um, it wasn't actually too hard to sell properties during that time. You know, some people are worried about, you know, different things like the, like the Zillow thing and the 
showing time thing and the, I don't know what, you know, but somebody's going to have to sit down unless I'm just completely oblivious. Somebody's going to have to sit down and really show me because I'm really, I really want to know to show me what a, what a, from point A to point B, them completely taking over the industry and doing away with agents because um, the way I see it, that's not even, that's not even on the horizon. I don't even see anything that could even potentially even threaten our positions as, as real estate agents. Now, might there be some supply and demand and might the dick, might the market dictate our commission a little bit? Might we get squeezed a little there? Yeah, sure. Sure, absolutely. But it's not going to go to zero and it's always going to be super lucrative, right? It's always going to, it's, it's incredibly lucrative, right? If we go to a, to a four and four, two and two to each agent, which is already happening in a lot of markets, that could become a norm. I'm not about it. I take five and six for every listing. But if we did go to that, 2% still incredibly lucrative and new agents coming in never knew what 3% felt like. Add 200 for some random referrals. You got 5,000 people that own property in your market that you talk to that are getting a weekly email from you every single week on the same day of the week forever. They never forget who you are and how helpful you were, how dependable you were, how professional you were, how hardworking you were, how personable you were. That's what people want. Closings will happen every day for the rest of your life and that this game is one of the most simple games out there. We're just trying to make it too complicated. There's a million different ways you can build your business, but you got to simplify it down and narrow it down to the top, you know, three or four things and then sacrifice the business you might lose on the other a hundred things to really focus on these three or four things. And the reason why I lost everything, the real, the real root of the reason why I, I, I failed so hard was because that first part of my career, I was a hundred percent focused on listing sales, getting the contracts, closings, money. I was a hundred percent focused on the money. And, and when I, when I went through the crash, not only did I realize my friend was doing the same exact strategies he was doing before the crash and that succeeding at a big, in a big, big way. I also realized that some of my clients that were buying and selling with me before I got out of the business were still buying and selling during that 2005 and 2008 range where I didn't sell a property. Like I, I realized that they were still selling, they were still buying and selling stuff. And then it hit me. I was like, Oh, if I would have maintained the relationship with these people, then I would have been able to continue to have a, a, a steady business. But it wasn't about the relationships for me in the beginning. It was about the money. These agents that do work in these really large cities, you know, the, the Miamis and the Birmingham's and the Atlantas, you know, it's tough. You could have to drive 45 minutes, two hours to go show some houses, you know? So when it comes down to that, especially in, when you're a new agent, it just kind of depends on where you are in your career and what you're willing to do. When I was a new agent, I drove two hours to get a listing agreement signed. Uh, I drove two hour, two or three hours to show some houses. You know, uh, I, I was willing to do, I didn't care. I'd do whatever I, whatever I had to do back then. But as your career progresses, you want to be more efficient, you know, and you can, you, you, you kind of have agents that you know in these different areas and you can kind of think, ah, you know, I'm going to refer this one out, make 25% for nothing. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll use my time more wisely, still make 25% on that deal. And maybe, maybe do another deal, you know, in that same time frame. Now I made one and a quarter where I would have made, you know, one.